Hello everybody, this is Debbie from the Inspiration Station and today I'm going to try something a little bit different. I'm going to do a process video, um, but I've prepared a lot of this stuff ahead of time, so hopefully this will go by a little quick. Um, these are the photos that I plan to scrap. I have a brand new grandson. His name is Grayson and he made a very dramatic entrance to the world the 1st of February. So these are the photos that I wanna use. You can see I've already matted them um, just to save a little bit of time. And what I wanted to do was to make a background paper or a patterned paper using this stencil that we got um, from uh, SCT Sampler. It was the January one, I believe. Was it January or February? It must've been January. Um, so this heart stencil, and also in that sampler was this great die. It's a double die, um, so it's got the, the words, lots of love, and then it also has the background. So I've already done that ahead of time as well. Um, what I wanted to do is show you how I did this because there's this really you know, great tip that I have that I don't remember who I learned it from, uh, probably Jennifer McGuire or someone. Um, but when you're stenciling, you know, you want to make sure that your stencil stays in place. And I've seen a lot of people put it down on their mat and tape it down, you know, using their tape like this. If the paper, if you're going to be doing something like this, where it's um, smaller than the stencil especially, flip it over and tape it on the back because it doesn't matter if it's covering anything and it holds the paper right to the stencil so that as you move it around, even if it moves on your surface, you know, sometimes when you tape the stencil down, the paper underneath will move. So just tape it to the back like this. And I've got a bunch of pieces of removable tape there. Um, and then I'm going to use the Distress Oxide in Speckled Egg, which is a perfect match to the paper that I wanna use for this layout. And I'm just using a blending brush. I believe this is from Picket Fence. Um, and just, you know, inking it up. And I'm just gonna start and go in circular motion, just over and over and over again. And you can make this as dark or as light as you want. Obviously, the heavier you, you put down the ink or the more times you go over it, you build the layers. But it's really easy and it gives you a great look. So what I did was I actually made an 11 inch piece. I took a piece of eight and a half by 11 inch cardstock and I made the full length. And you can see that obviously the, um, the stencil is not quite long enough. So what I did was I just covered the bottom with another piece of cardstock so that I didn't get a line where it ended and then moved it down and kept the pattern going. So you can see how nice that comes out. So that was something I've never used stencils on my scrapbook pages before, but I've been wanting to. So I did on this one, and this is the paper that I made. Let me get this out of the way so that I don't make, get ink all over. The cardstock that I'm using is actually, um, I made a frame style foundation. The gray is a basil paper, and it's a really heavy piece. The white is really thin, so I did gut the gray piece, but not the white piece, because that was a really thin piece of paper and it didn't need to be gutted. Um, and then I did the background, um, I'm sorry, the, the blue paper, a little bit smaller to make a frame because I wanted it to come to 11 inches because I have this eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. Oh, I guess it's 11 and a half. I want this to come on here and match up with this that I made. And I'm not gluing this down right now. Um, I'll do that off camera. But that was the general layout that I wanted for these photos. So now I have this great speckled egg color and I went looking in my stash for some embellishments. And I found this old card from Crate Paper. This tag was also Crate Paper. This I think was um, Echo Park. Of course, I showed you the, the die cut that I made from SCT Sampler. And this is a really old um, Heidi Swap piece. I don't know if there's a name on it or not. I don't see it, but it's really old. I've had this for years, 2013. And I don't think I've used any of the pieces off of it yet. So 
um, I found this one and it says, count your blessings, show gratitude, be grateful for the little things. There's always something to be thankful for. And I thought that's perfect for the baby. And because I used this basil, um, I think they call it bling. Yeah, basil bling cardstock. It's a silver and it's got a bit of a sheen to it, but it's not glittery. Um, so it, it gives you a nice bright finish, but it's not glitter, which I thought was perfect. Um, so I decided that I wanted to use silver letters to kind of go with that paper. And this was a funny little uh, coincidence. These stickers are, they're actually thickers from American Crafts. And the name of them is Grayson. And that is my grandson's name, is Grayson. So I just thought that was a really cool coincidence. Um, so of course I had to use it. I originally wasn't gonna use the title Hello, but you know, when I saw the name, I had to. Um, and then I did spell out his name using these. This is about the only new product I used. Everything else came from my stash, but these are new, uh, the Alphabet Soup from Doodlebug Designs in the color mint. Um, I think they're a little bluer than what I would call mint. The header looks more like mint, but this has a really pretty, it, it matches the speckled egg perfectly. So I spelled out his name with those. Uh, what else? Oh, then I decided I needed a little tag with the, his birth date on it. So I used, I can find it here. It's an Elizabeth Craft set of stamps. There it is. So this is the retro label set. And I used this size here and I just hand cut it. There is a set of dies that goes with it, but you know, they're basically straight lines and a circle. So I can, I can cut those by hand. That's not a big deal. I didn't get the die for that, but I stamped that in the speckled egg. So it matches perfectly. I also used a date stamp and this one is from Point Planner, which I believe is American Crafts. I got it at Joann's and I liked because it had this little heart that you see here. Um, it has a bunch of different fra phrases or um, it's got the days of the week and then the word date, the heart, and then it says traveled on, don't forget or photo taken. But I thought the heart was perfect for that. And of course I stenciled hearts. So that's gonna be my um, overarching icon of this page is the heart. Um, I also went and dug out my Fisker's punch. This is uh, the Fisker's heart punch. And then I wanted another heart because this wasn't quite big enough. So I actually cut this on my Cricut. There was a, a Cricut heart that was just about the exact same shape. And I'm gonna layer those two together. And I did put these on foam so you can see how I'm gonna do that. All right, so the plan is to put his photo up here. And then these two photos, which is when he was being weighed in and after he got all cleaned up, nice and neat. Um, and then his name, which I have this on a piece of sticker paper and it's not sticking, um, which is I guess good in some ways because I won't have trouble getting it off, but um, they're not sticking very well. So I will have to put glue, extra glue on that. Um, the date's not gonna go there. So we're gonna put the hello there, his name, and then I want the, his birth date over here. I'm gonna put that on there. Um, oh, and then of course I had this card, which I love because it says, I love you this much. And it mimics the way his little arms are stretched out in front of him on both of these photos. So I thought that was awesome. You know, little things amuse me. I'm gonna put the big heart behind it and then stack this heart on top to give some dimension. And I like the way that that works. Now this tag, um, it was from Crate Paper and it says month one and then has weight and length. I don't need that because it's not month one. Obviously he's just brand new. So I'm gonna use this little tag and it's so tiny. It was actually from the six by six pad of, um, I think it's called Welcome Baby Boy. or It's, it's one of the newer Echo Park Baby Boy lines. Um, and that it's the same color that I needed. So I'm just gonna cover up that one like that. Let me pull this off so I can do it right now. It's easier to work with once it's stuck down. So I'm gonna cover up that one. I will put his birth weight 
and length on there. And then when I put this down, this Heidi Swap sticker is gonna go on top. So you're not gonna see that one month. So we're gonna build a little cluster there. And I wanted the lots of love down here to bring this darker uh, lagoon color down here. But as I was looking at it, I'm like, ah, it needs something. It's still, something's missing. So I went and got my Fisker's Punch, which is just a scallop. And I'm gonna put that right on the seam of where these two pieces of paper meet. I like the way that looks. I do have to trim it down a little bit. And I'm gonna put that there, move these guys back in. Sorry, I'm shifting everything around, but you know, you know, that's how it goes when you don't glue things down. So this is the general idea uh, that I have, and I like it very much. Of course, I'm gonna have to add some embellishments, obviously, but one of the things that was bothering me was on this Heidi Swap piece, the background is this creamy color. It's not quite yellow, but it's darker than say a cream, like this is an off-white. So I was trying to figure out how can I do that? How can I bring that color in? And I went to my Nouveau Drops and I have this one, it's called Buttermilk, I think. Yep, it's a gloss buttermilk but I don't wanna put it right on the page because I didn't know if it was gonna work. So I'm not sure if you know this, but you can, if I can find my piece of paper, you can make your own enamel dots. Oh, I lost my piece of paper. Oh, here it is. By taking sticker paper and making your dots right on that. So you can make them whatever size you want. And I like that because I never use those big ones that come in the enamel dots. So you can just put these onto your wax paper, leave them overnight to dry, and then pop them off and you would detach them with glue. Now you, for these, they get sort of like that Hershey Kiss curl. And so I'm just gonna pop them on the back to kind of flatten them a little bit. But when they're done, when they're dry, you can take them off and you have your own little custom enamel dots. Whoop, there they go. Um, so those, find my little picker here. So then I can put them onto the page. So I can add this buttermilk color wherever I think that it needs it. I'm trying to get them to stay right side up is the hard part. I don't know, does anybody else struggle with that? <laughs> with their enamel dots, once you take them off the sheet, it's like, oh no, they wanna go upside down. Yeah, that's what these guys are doing. So, course I'll be putting some over here because that's where we want to draw the color to. All right, be difficult here. Oh, I lost him. There's one. So I'll end up putting some maybe like this and see there's three of them. I'll just keep adding them wherever I like them as we get going. So we'll see how that turns out. These are just gonna keep turning upside down on me. They're like the problem child. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's not gonna flip, there it goes. All right. That's the only trouble with making your own. They're kind of hard to corral once you take them off the, the sheet. So I'm gonna put those on and I'll see what else I need once this is done, but this is generally what the page is gonna look like. And I'm gonna put it all together and then I will be right back.
Okay, I'm back and the page is pretty much put together. Um, I did not put the Nouveau drops on yet, uh, but I started thinking, you know, I've got this heart motif going on that I might have some heart enamel dots. I do have heart enamel dots. I just might have something that would work with that color. And look at that, I do. I have that. These are possibly Doodlebug. I'm not really sure, I don't remember. I can almost see the packaging, but uh, not positive if it was Doodlebug or not. But yeah, those are super cute. So I think I may use those instead. And this is just my mess of enamel dots. This is how I organize them. I use um, a six by eight album, and then I use the pocket pages with the four. Let's see if I can find one that's nice and neat here. This one's easier to see. Um, so yeah, I just stick them in the four piece. And then if I have some really big ones, um, like these I haven't opened yet, I just stick them in the four by six pockets. So I have them all by color. I tend, I moved a lot of them anyway onto index cards uh, so that they're by color. It just works easier for me, but you can see that I have a lot of newer ones that I've never taken out of the package. So I get lazy and I just put them in there. So anyway, that's enough of that. So I'm going to finish this up and just put the last few touches on it. I will have some still photos at the end. I thank you very much for staying with me and watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Press that subscribe button. Um, I certainly appreciate each and every one of you that takes the time to watch my videos and subscribe and leave comments. I love reading the comments. That's the best part. So thanks again for visiting and till the next time, have a great day. Thank you.